All right, what you see here is a series resistive capacitive circuit with two capacitors and one resistor. We're going to talk about how to do proper calculations for a resistive capacitive circuit. So what you want to start with first is to convert your two capacitors into their ohmic values or into capacitive reactants. So you'll start with your XC formula right up here is your XC formula and then you are going to take your calculator and input the information into your calculator. So you will start with either 2 pi or 6.28 whichever you like best and you will put that in and you will times it by frequency so we can see here that frequency is 21 kilohertz. So we'll put 21, shift, and then hit our 6, which is where our K is at. And then we will times it by the actual value of the capacitance. So I am going to get the capacitive reactance for XC1 first, so I will use 0.54 nano. So I'll put 0.54 time, or I'm sorry, shift, and that is a nano, so N nano is above 3. And then I will equal that, and then invert it, and then press equals again, and I get XC1 is 14.04 kilo ohms. Zero four kilo ohms. All oh, right. And then we'll do the same process to get the capacitive reactants of XC2. So we'll take 6.28 or 2 pi, whichever you feel most comfortable with times 21k times, in this case, we're going to use the capacitance of C2, which is 0.76 nanofarads, so 0.76 shift nano, right? So we have nano equals inverse equals, and we get 9.98 kilo ohms. So we started with those two, now we know that we can combine like values when we are in series, which means that I can add XC1 and XC2 to get XCT. So I still have my 9.98K in my calculator, all I have to do is add 14.04K and I get a total capacitive reactance of 24.02 kilo ohms. So 24.02 kilo ohms. So I have, now I can figure out impedance, which is Z, right? That's impedance. So if I'm trying to figure out impedance, I take my total resistance, which since I only have the one resistor, I can take 12K. So I'm going to put in 12, shift, and then 6, which is my kilo. And then I'm going to hit my squared button. And add that to my total capacitive reactance, which is 24.02, shift, K. And I'm going to square that. And then I'm going to hit my equal sign, right? Because that's my order of operation. I do the pieces in the middle first. And then I'm going to square root that all and hit my equal sign again, and I get a total impedance of 26.85 kilo ohms. So once I have total impedance, I can get a total current. So if this had, we will say, 100 volts applied, then we would take 100 divided by our 26.85 kilo ohms and we would get a total current or an IT right of 3.72 milliamps 3.72 milliamps so that is our total current and then we take our total current and we times it, we multiply it by its end by the individual ohmic values to get their voltage drops. So if I wanted to know what the voltage drop of C1 was, I would multiply this by 3.72 milliamps 
and this by 3.72 milliamps and that would give me the voltage drops for both my capacitor 1, C1, and my second capacitor, C2. And if I took this number and multiplied it by that number, I would also get the voltage drop of my resistor. And that is the total steps to get uh, total current and total impedance and all the voltage drops for your resistive capacitive circuit.